I'm actually today, go figure. So it happens on everybody's having a week so we've got some coming in tomorrow and Always something, I'm telling. Always. We'll box today. Here we are. All right, I can see things now. Woohoo! Okay, so let's see. I had a very busy weekend on our Kimberbell Home Sweet Haunted Home event, which was a ton of fun. We had a ton of fabric last week. We've got a ton of fabric coming in this week. I'm really looking forward to um, tomorrow's delivery for Lush, which are the irises in three different colors, which I really love. And we've got some camo because we ask a lot for camo. This is a new camo line by Northcott. So it's got all the different branch coloring. It's probably one of the uh, more realistic camos coming from a military, you know, perspective and a military family. So I've seen a lot. I didn't get pixelated, which I could have, but I just got traditional camo. Um, that's coming in tomorrow. And today we have something really fun coming in from Northcott. It's called Itsy Bitsy Project Panels. They're yard size panels with blocks of different fabrics according to which uh, theme the panel goes for. So we've got red, white, and blue. We've got Einstein. We've got babies. We've got golf. So it should be fun. And I've got three patterns, I believe, coming in for that. Um, they all require or don't absolutely require. But the, out of the three panels, I think two of them require additional fabric along with the panel. One of them requires two panels. But the three different patterns that I think are fairly easy, and I think they would make great um, kids' quilts. Or um, got red, white, and blue for valor, or um, you know stuff like that. But I think you're gonna like the ease of these. So I'll let everybody know when they come in today. Um, okay, let's get to our first blocks. We're on block sixty-five and sixty-six, and the first one is sixty-five. There we go. Believe it or not, it's very simple. So you have like a mini four patch here, and then we've got the corner aspect of the block. I'm going to put these together in the four patch first, adding either this side um, or this side next. And then whichever side I don't put together, we'll add the cornerstone block and put that in and it'll be fairly easy to put together. So all I'm gonna do at the beginning is take the little four patch, we're gonna chain piece it. So how are you, Miss Pat? Are you having a good week so far? Chain 
chain piecing is just a matter of not cutting my thread before I start inserting my next set of pieces. Mm -mm -mm. Good, I'm glad in this top. Morning, Suzanne. My nails were really, really nice, and then they started breaking really, really bad, and they hurt. They're not good. It's not fun. All right, I'm just going to iron. Right now on this four patch, we have two of the same fabric in this block. So this one and this one are the same. What that tells me is I'm going to actually iron my seam towards those same fabrics. So when I go to put these two pieces together, it'll give me an easy option to set my seams and align up the block very, very easily. This is what I mean. Okay. So I iron towards this seam, this side, and iron my seam towards that side. So when I want to set the seams, uh, yeah. I want to set the seams. They will line up really, really well. So the top one, the seams go in this way, the bottom one, the seams go in this way. And again, this is repeat, but worth repeating. I'm gonna be sewing from here down. I've got my pin on an angle so that I can stop with my needle down right in the seam allowance before I have to actually physically take the pin out. Nine out of 10 times. That will make sure that my seam stays lined up and does not move. I love this quilt pack because we're doing a lot of the same techniques, and the more you do them, there you go. The better you get. This is a really, really good technique quilt to help master the basic techniques of quilting and piecing. Plus, it's fun. Okay, so we've got our four patch. I'm going to take these two and sew them together. Take these two and sew those together. I'm going to iron toward this same fabric on both of these. So again, when I late when I try to sew the top down, my seams will align nicely and nest. When you have two of the same fabrics, it makes it easy to decide which side to iron the seam. Yep. My thread came undone. All right, so I'm gonna iron with this piece on top because that's where I want my seam to go so that I can iron it once to kind of prep the seam and the, the thread and then flip it over and that will give me a nice crisp seam.
But even the piece on top that you want your seam to go towards, it makes it easy to tool it. There you go. Best press, again, as usual, is, our, is your friend. Um, Pat, I really, believe it or not, don't use an expensive iron. For the classroom, I like the Shark. So you can get it at Walmart. Um, it's a fairly cheap iron. It works really well. And as you can imagine, has been dropped a few times in the classroom. In the past, I would say six or seven years, I've only gone and purchased one iron after my last one went kaput. In the in the, next to my table, I'm using my little mighty iron, which is like my travel iron. I just here's the thing about the irons, okay? I don't care how expensive your iron is; they're gonna leak eventually. They all do. So. In the classroom and in my personal irons, I never fill them with water, ever. Because they're always going to leak at the wrong and inopportune time, like when you're ironing something white. <laughs> so I just use Best Press. And I find, I don't know for sure, but I think not filling the irons up with water actually helps them last longer. It, the uh, shark iron is not one of those pop-up ones, but it is an auto shut off iron, which in the classroom works great. Um, and they last for a long time. And I do mean a long time. Okay. This one is going, the uh, seam is going that way. On the bottom, the seam is going this way. Oh, actually, here you go. So on the top, it seems going that way, and on the bottom, it seems going this way. You're welcome. I just find I, best press works better than water and steam and all of that other crap. And it just, it, oh, that's what I've done for years. Like I said, a lot of what, more than a lot, the bulk of what I've learned over the years was is pretty much self-taught. It's just things that I learned to make things easier for me, easier for my students, easier for business. Here we go. Block 50, 65, right there. All I gotta do is iron it. All right, I'm gonna be right back um, because I forgot to unlock the door for the mailman. Be right back. Sorry about that, I forgot. 
Oh, you've never tried Best Pep Press, Pat? Best Press is a starch alternative. Comes in tons of scents. Basically, especially for something like this where you're doing a lot of small piecing, all it is is a starch alternative. It's not going to leave any marks or anything like that. But it for cottons, I mean, you can literally use it on anything that you want to starch. But um, like, you know, the fold uh, when the fabric comes off the bolt, you know how hard it is to get that ironed out? Best Press makes everything so much easier. When you're doing a quilt like this with a lot of little pieces, Best Press is going to help with your piecing because it's not it's going to help stop the stretching of the fabric going one way or the other way while you're trying to piece it together. I use Best Press all the time. Oh, we sell it by the gallons. So it comes in small bottles. That's what's in, and we use these sprayers that have a fine mist that you just refill. So they come in all different scents. There's three different sizes from gallon to, I don't know what the other two smaller ones are. And you just keep refilling them in all kinds of scents from scent free to rose to linen, you name it. Yeah, well, Best Press is going to be your friend. All right, let's go to the next one. Here is block 66. Super easy. Again, we're going to sew these three pieces together, sew these two pieces together, and then sew the two halves together. It's really, really easy. Sometimes it's hard to tell the right side of some of these fabrics. Yes, Pat, you can even use Best Pass on clothing instead of the old spray starts where if you spray too much, you got all these white flakes all over everything. Plus, another important um, plus side of Best Press, if you like to use friction pens for marking your fabric like me, if you use Best Press and start your fabric before you use a marking pen, you will never have a problem with any marks not coming out. The best press starch acts as like a barrier. So even though when you mark your fabric, it's not actually going through the different threads and weave of the fabric. You're welcome. All right, all I gotta do is iron this one and it really doesn't matter where you iron your seams because you're not going to have any matching seams. So I tend to iron it where it wants to go. Meaning it, it already, the way it's pieced and laid out, wants to go to the center. So iron it that way. Okay, now I'm going to sew these two pieces together. I'm working on, let's see, this is second week of a two week stint and no day off. So it's already been a very busy week for me. I am very much looking forward to having a day off this week.
All right. Now all we have to do is sew the two halves together. The only thing I want you to be aware of, okay, we're going this way, but actually I'm gonna turn it over. This is another part of helping to master the basics. By turning it over and sewing it from this side, I can see the seams and go a little bit slower over the seams and make sure they're still gonna lay where I want them to and how I pressed them. If you start now getting your seams nice and neat, and you're ready to quilt it, whether you're gonna quilt it or the long arm is gonna quilt it, it will quilt much easier and better if your seams are not all kinds of wonky and you don't have a lot of bulk in your seams. <laughs> I do have a day off once every two weeks. That's what happens. I took the summer off uh, from doing events and now I'm back on the event schedule. So guess what? It's just the way it is. I can only do the online events um, on Sundays and Mondays when the store is closed because I'm too busy otherwise. And that way nobody interrupts the video and the events. Miss Nola is going in on Friday to the vet. Here is block 66. So you got block 65 and block 66. Those are to this week's vet, uh, blocks. <laughs> yep, Miss Nola is going to the vet. I get to drop her off at 7 a.m. on Friday. And hopefully um, she gets to have her stitches removed. And then we can officially introduce her to Boomer. And they can play without worrying about her getting hurt or tearing stitches or something like that. But I think they felt going to take them out. They said it could, they could leave them in a little bit longer, depending on how it's healing. But I think she's healing really, really well. Other than being a puppy and still not completely sure of these three legs. So she keeps slipping and sliding a little bit here or there. But she is doing just fine. You don't have any questions for me today on today's videos. I will call it good for today and get my button gear to get some more work done. All right. I take that as a no questions. I hope everybody has a wonderful day and a great week. I will let everybody know on Facebook as soon as the fabric's in. And I'm going to be working probably to, today and tomorrow on the newsletter. You're welcome, Pat. Have a great day. See you later. You're welcome, Suzanne.